us for this special presentation. The outcrops of the Kerouard Islands in British Columbia are bleak and treacherous, pounded by the violent waves of the Pacific Ocean. They jut out of Cape St. James at the southernmost point of the Queen Charlotte Islands. It's almost paradoxical that this inhospitable and hard-to-reach place would be the breeding ground for a large colony of northern or stellar sea lions. Year after year, they come both to give birth to their young and to mate. The sea lion bulls haul their 900 kilogram bulks onto these steep promontories to await the arrival of the cows. Each breeding bull stakes a claim to a territory which he will fiercely defend. This is known as being on station. The immobile heads pointed skywards and the half-closed eyes make the bulls look relaxed. It's a deceptive impression. In fact, each bull is sending a clear and aggressive message that he is the absolute master of his territory. In street parlance, he might say, don't mess with me. The long hair or mane that grows on the neck of an adult bull is the probable origin of the name sea lion. The stellar sea lion, in fact, belongs to the eared seal group, sharing with fur seals the characteristic small ear with a prominent pinna. The neck of this bull is crisscrossed with scars and wounds, bearing witness to the extreme violence of the battles that take place frequently during the period when territorial boundaries are being established prior to the arrival of the cows. Sea lion's movements on land are laborious and clumsy. But underwater, the huge foreflippers become almost wing-like, and the creature glides with an ease and grace that looks like flying. Or ballet. Their fluid movements and innate intelligence make some sea lions invaluable as circus performers. But there is little rapport between the elegant aquatic ballet and the teeming and sometimes brutal phase when the sea lions haul out to bear their young and to mate. Northern wildlife will continue on the Discovery Channel. Shark Week 93, coming in July. Do you remember the feeling of wonder? Bring back the smile to the child inside of you. Touch the magic.
Growing Up Together is brought to you by Clorox. You want to make your baby's room fresh, clean, and germ-free. Relax, it's not that hard. Tips next. Think her robe is white? Not next to his Clorox white. This looks white, but look again. Let's face it, clothes washed in detergent alone can look dull and dingy. But it doesn't have to be that way. Because adding Clorox liquid bleach every time you wash brings out a white that's as fresh and crisp as new. Now this is the real white. Clorox liquid bleach for a brand new kind of white. Also in lemon and fresh scents. A baby's room gets a lot of use. To help keep it clean, add three quarters of a cup of liquid bleach and a tablespoon of detergent to a gallon of water. Rinse, let it dry. This solution kills germs and there's no residue, so it's safe. When a room's clean and fresh, you and your baby will enjoy it together. You know how later in the morning you can start to run out of steam? Well, I've actually found a breakfast that helps keep me going. Breakfast with grape nuts. I heard try it for a week, so I did. And I feel so good. Turns out grape nuts is a fat-free, natural energy source. And it has a natural, crunchy taste. But really, you've got to try it for a week yourself. See how good you feel all morning. Breakfast with Post Grape Nut Cereal helps keep you going strong all morning long. Tuesday nights on the Discovery Channel. Share the dream behind the genius and glimpse the science that makes it come true. Celebrate the spirit of invention. Then... Step into the future. From the solar car to space-age crime-fighting techniques, witness the latest and the fastest cutting-edge technology that's about to change our lives. Take the next step. Tuesdays, beginning at 9 Eastern and Pacific, only on the Discovery Channel. Northern Wildlife now continues on the Discovery Channel. The first group of cows finally arrives at the rookery. There are 12 to 15 territories or stations on this particular rookery for them to choose from. But they are not interested in mating just yet. The cows are looking for a good spot to give birth. And the bull in each defended territory will make sure they are unhassled by younger bulls. A few days later, the rocks are crowded with pregnant cows. This pack instinct of the sea lion is not without harmful consequences. The vital space for labor and birth is at a premium and will soon run out. In the crowded conditions, tempers flare easily as each cow desperately holds on to her few square feet of space. Although smaller and more slender than the bulls, the female sea lion is no less combative. Labor lasts a relatively long time among sea lions. After 15 minutes of abdominal contractions, the amniotic sac slowly slips out between the hind flippers. The mother sea lion watches the procedure intensely until the pup finally emerges. Sea lion pups are either born head first like this fellow, or the hind flippers can emerge first, which takes longer. The process of bonding or imprinting between the mother and her pup begins as soon as the amniotic sac breaks. First contact is established by scent and by sound.
mother ruptures the umbilical cord by sliding around to face her newborn pup. At birth, the pup weighs close to 16 kilograms and provides a good anchor for the maneuver. Once they are detached, the cow and her pup will rely on scent to maintain close contact and sound to find each other at a distance. Within minutes of the birth, the pup makes its first attempts at suckling, which can give rise to comical errors. This pup has confused an ear for a teat. In spite of her need for rest, the mother will stay close to her baby throughout the first week of its life. This brief moment of intimacy is a rare respite from the quarrelsome life on these rocks. The pups grow quickly and need a lot of sustenance. Once it has found a teat, a real one this time, this fellow suckles the rich, thick milk with enthusiasm. as a tanker. This little tanker has overtanked. Burping up the rich milk only stops him from nursing for a few seconds. But not all the pups born on these rocks will live long enough to suckle and bond with their mothers. The crevices and pools of the Caroward Rookery will claim many of them. Mortality in the first year runs between 10 and 100 percent, with most deaths occurring in the first few weeks of life. However, the afterbirth of the pups is a means of survival for other species, gulls, eagles, and crows. Survival is a tough business for the young sea lions, in spite of the help and care they receive from their mothers. In addition to the dangerous terrain, they must contend with cramped quarters and squabbling among the cows. The master of the territory seems indifferent to this pump's presence as he tries to settle a dispute. Stellar sea lion cows do not form into true harems around a bull. They round up into groups, but they are free to move from one bull's territory to another. Free to move, that is, provided they can hack their way through the bodies to find a free spot, as this late arrival is trying desperately to do. few weeks, the overcrowding reaches acute proportions, and fights break out frequently. Although they are not as violent as the confrontations between bulls, the squabbles between cows over space can become bloody.
sometimes, having just given birth, a cow finds herself unwelcome and is forced to take her newborn pup in search of a new resting place. The short trip over the rocks can be more like running the gauntlet. of her fellow creatures at every turn. The new mother must use all of her skill and determination to find a tiny space and get her pup safely there. The water in the pool soon becomes brilliant green with over-fertilization, and the steep rims make them death traps for young sea lions, who are just barely able to swim. When a pup falls into one by accident, the mother must come to its rescue and brave once more the hostility of the other cows. Northern wildlife will continue on the Discovery Channel. The forest, haven or cash crop tonight on the Nature of Things. Everywhere you look at J.C. Penny, you'll see signs of change. Stop signs, traffic signs, and signs of construction. Penny. And while our changes are a welcome sign, a sign that's always stood for great values is... Penny. Yeah. By nature, cats are choosy. Some even choose their owners. But Iams knows cats depend on people to give them what they need. More meat. Cats crave its taste. Meat is so important for eyes, muscle tone, skin and coat, and energy. And since there's more meat-based protein in Iams than the leading dry cat food, your cat will love it. So choose Iams, and your cat will be glad he chose you. Because more meat matters, insist on Iams. Five. This Father's Day, bring down the house. First, he's a demolition daddy who built an empire on tearing it down. Step inside the Dynamite Dynasty. Then, singing and dancing, he's Father Goose to this feathered family. Meet the crane man of the show. <laughs> Tonight, beginning at 9 Eastern and Pacific, only on Discovery Sunday. Hey. We have the same shoes. Yes, darling. Designer Originals from Brodeo Drive. And only $100. Mine are the same Designer Originals. But they were only $40. Where? Standard Shoes, of course. You don't have to be rich to shop at Standard Shoes, where you always get famous maker shoes at deep discounts. See our Friday LA Times ad for super specials at a Standard Shoes store near you. 4370966. It's how to get 25% off AT&T calls to any one area code you select any time of day. It's free. Plus, we'll give you 15% off the rest of your calls. So, like I said, AT&T could save you more than MCI or Sprint. And you didn't believe me. Call now for 25% off where it means the most. Just another part of the eye plan. Northern Wildlife now continues on the Discovery Channel. In the frequent melees between the cows, it is inevitable that pups sometimes lose their mothers. For a pup that is still barely able to crawl, it's a daunting task to go in search of her over these rocks. The cow calls and uses scent to try to track down a lost pup in amongst the rocks. She sniffs in vain at other pups as well as the ground around them. She seems to be more and more perplexed by the situation. This is yet another hazard for the little sea lions. 
the cows can be violent in their rejection of a pup with the wrong scent. A few of them will not survive the experience of mistaken identity. For the 10 or 11 days following the birth of the pups, while they wait for the cows to come into heat, the bulls maintain an aggressive stance in defense of their territories. The cows may be able to cross territorial boundaries freely, but woe betide the bull that tries to. With swollen necks and bared fangs, two enormous bulls face off along one of these precisely demarcated lines in what is known as a boundary display. Their quivering whiskers just barely touch right over the line. If one of them dares to advance by even a few centimeters, violence will ensue. aside, however, in a move called a face away. They indicate their mutual satisfaction with the boundary and avoid a battle. Meanwhile, the sea lion pups, nourished by their mother's rich milk, are gaining weight and becoming less and less vulnerable. They leave their mothers for short periods to frolic among themselves. The time for mating has arrived. cow nibbles affectionately on the thick neck of the bull, inviting him to mate. He seems to be playing hard to get, but the long and whimsical mating ritual serves to stimulate ovulation. disappear on both sides. The enormous sea lion bull has dropped his on-station stance and seems tender and playful. But the precise moment of coupling will be determined solely by the degree of estrus or heat of the cow. that she is ready before mounting her and she almost disappears under his bulk. By a curious trait of adaptation, the fertilized egg will not be implanted for another three months. Gestation lasts eight months so that the birth will coincide with the mating season next year. Fifteen minutes under the bull, the cow signals that it's time for him to get off by roughly grabbing at his neck and chin. A few 
hundred cows will mate with the 15 or so breeding bulls in the rookery before they leave these rocks for another year. At the end of July, two and a half months after their arrival, the stellar sea lions begin to return to the ocean. The pups will accompany their mothers to other non-breeding haul-out sites along the coast. dive. The last of the enormous sea lion bulls finally deserts the minuscule territory he defended so fiercely. To return to his natural element, the sea. been a reading teacher for over a generation and have used many methods. Then I tried a reading program called Hooked on Phonics and the light went on. My students took... program will not be seen at this time. Join us for this special presentation. Few people have studied social behavior among the gray seals that inhabit Canada's east coast. Biological and demographic information is relatively precise, but we know very little about the social habits of this large marine mammal. Sable Island is a key breeding site for the gray seal. Between mid-December and the beginning of February, Vast numbers of gray seals live cheek by jowl on this thin strip of sand, providing a superb opportunity for us to observe their behavior close up. The females, or cows, will haul out to give birth to their pups. The males, or bulls, will have to wait about 15 days before the cows will be ready to mate. The scientific name for the gray seal means hook-nosed sea pig and local fishermen call them horseheads. Considering the bull's elongated snip, it's not hard to see why. The pups are born almost immediately after the cows reach the shore. At birth, the pups are covered with white natal fur, known as lanugo, and weigh almost 60.